Zinger Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. silently along the darkened hallway to the room of voluptuous Kitty Carstairs, who had spurned him. Mike the Gat fumbled clumsily for the doorknob. Mike the Gat stepped into the room, closed the door softly behind him. There was a spurt of flame, a deafening report. Mike the Gat fell twisting to the floor. Kitty Carstairs was in for it now. Her pretty face was as crushed and white as torn gardenia petals. How could this helpless beauty, this poor child of adversity, know that she had a perfect case of self-defense? She must dispose of the body. Her eyes wildly sought the dumb waiter shaft. Police are baffled. What was that again? I beg your pardon? Sneed, I can't begin to thank you for stepping in on this case, but I am baffled. So I gather. It has to be suicide, and yet... It was murder. Murder? You're sure of that? Oh, of course you're sure of it. You wouldn't have said so. The gun was found in Dennis's right hand. That is true. Dennis was left-handed. Brilliant! Brilliant, Sneed, brilliant. Only you could have come so surely and unerringly to the point. Get a move on. Get a move on, will you? Morning, Sneed. Morning, Woodward. Hi, beautiful. Hi, Anson. Hi, beautiful. Watch your step. Miss White. Oh, Miss White, may I, do you mind if I try out something on you? Well, if you hurry. Now, every red-blooded boy must own a Coulter Cosmic Ray pistol, a deadly repeating weapon that Wolf Rugged used to crush the invaders from Mars. Boink. Boink? Does a Cosmic Ray go boink? Well, that's the trouble with this thing. It doesn't make any noise at all. Well, perhaps we'd better discuss it at the board meeting. They're waiting. Oh, Miss White, look, I was wondering, you being Mr. Coulter's secretary, perhaps you'd heard something. You know, with the... Vice Presidency opening up and... Well, to tell the I, truth, I just Mr. thought that maybe I could uh, ask Mr. Coulter for some more money. Oh, well, I wouldn't do that. I mean, perhaps you'd better wait and see what Mr. Coulter has in mind first. And right now, of course, we're keeping him waiting. Oh, that will never do. And this cosmic ray... Would you stop wobbling that thing? I still say that this cosmic ray gun definitely will not repel any invasion from Mars. What do you know about an invasion from Mars? I don't know anything about invasions from Mars, but I do know about small boys. They like guns and make a noise. The cosmic ray is silent, for your information. Well, they don't know that. They like guns that go boink. Or at a pinch, bzzzt. B.W., will you kindly inform Sneed to leave the creative thinking to me? Very well, Mr. Woodward. Let's adjourn our meeting until tomorrow, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Coulter, I was... Oh, uh, I... Sneed, I'd like you to stay behind for a few moments. See you tomorrow, David. Good day, gentlemen. Until tomorrow, then.
need, there's something important. I'm sorry about what just happened, Mr. Coulter. I was only trying to help, and Woodward infuriates me. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. Afraid? Well, as you probably know, Sneed, Mr. Lonsdale is retiring. Yes, I know, sir. That leaves a vice presidential vacancy and an opportunity for reorganization. I understand. Your job as promotion director is going to be eliminated. An outside agency will handle all promotion copy. Very wise decision, if I might say so. Now, I do want you and Woodward to get along, Sneed, because, well, frankly, Although it's not definite yet, I'm thinking of making him vice president and promoting you to his assistant. Woodward's assistant? You see the need for harmony, Sneed. Uh, if you get along with him, all well and good, but if you don't... Is there anything else? Just one more thing, Sneed. Do try to write some copy for that cosmic gun without any boinks or bzzzzz. <laughs> You knew, didn't you? About Woodward, I mean. I knew that they had plans for him, Mr. Sneed, but I didn't know it was definite. But I'm twice the novelty man he is. Then act like it, Mr. Sneed. All right. I will. First of all, I, I want you to have lunch with me, um, Christine. I'd love to, Philip, but I can't. Why not? I'm having lunch with Mr. Woodward. The name is Simpson. Simpson's the name. Simpson the Suit King. Well, don't you agree that a cosmic ray gun ought to go boink or pssst? <laughs> you novelty guys are all the same. Always with the spaceships. Eh, why not? A buck is a buck, even if it comes from outer space. <laughs> what can I do for you, Mr. Simpson? Nothing, friend. But I'm gonna do something for you. Pick out, a, pick out the material. I don't want to buy anything. Why, he says. <laughs> you want a suit from Simpson to Suit King. I never won anything in my whole life. Until today. I run a suit club, a dollar a week. Everybody who belongs is entitled to win a tailor-made suit free, absolutely free of charge in any week. Now, in case you still haven't won a suit after 35 weeks, I make you one free of charge anyway. Eh? What can you lose? A new one right off the bat. I haven't even joined. Give me a dollar, quick. There you are. Now, frankly, the reason you won one so quick is that uh, I'm trying to get my thimble in the door around here, you know what I mean? Drum up a little business. Yeah, but this certificate says that I'm entitled to a suit. Sure. Now I'll uh, just wander around the office and tell the folks about your good fortune, huh? Gather around, friends. Gather around. Let's not be shy, huh? <laughs> Simpson would like a word with you. A word that's gonna mean money in your pocket, friend. The whole town is flocking to join Simpson's Suit Club. You two, my friend, are gonna be privileged to join the organization that takes the consumer to its heart. There are only a few memberships left, friend, in this high-class exclusive coterie. And if you want to get in on the ground floor of a titanic bargain, remember it's a case of hurry, hurry, hurry. Hey, what do you think of this lucky character here? He wins a Simpson suit free. Could happen to you, friend. It couldn't happen to me, you cheap peddler, because I don't tolerate your kind around here. Here, now, just a minute, just a minute. You're talking to Simpson, the suit king. Get out of here. This is a business office. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. You Coulter. should be. All right, all right, hold your horses, will you, Dad? Uh, say, friend, uh, would you give me back the certificate? I forgot to endorse it. I'll uh, mail it out. Get out! Right, all right. You don't need a suit anyway. What you need is a double-breasted straitjacket. Get out of here! I'll get the better business bureau after you. That guy's crazy. I had no idea, sir. That Are you trying to disrupt my entire organization, Sneed? Uh, What's up, B.W.? It appears that Sneed here has won himself a suit and a rattle. Not a moment too soon, in my opinion. Welcome to 
Simpsons, the home of the gorgeous garment. Well, don't you recognize me, Mr. Simpson? Yeah, what is this, another summons? <laughs> no, I'm the, I'm the lucky winner from the Colter Novelty Company. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, say, that's too bad about you. It seems we made a slight mistake. You don't win a suit after all. There was another guy who works for another novelty company. You better let me have that. Now, just a moment, Mr. Simpson. This agreement says that I'm entitled to one custom-built suit. And, and I gave you a dollar. That makes the agreement legal. So you gave me a dollar, so sue me. I haven't the fence intention of suing you, but I imagine the Better Business Bureau would be most interested in this. Ah, uh, what is it you wear? A single or double-breasted? Oh, wear a single, please. <laughs> Fine. Follow me. Uh, Stanley? Yeah? Uh, bring out a couple of bolts of that imported cloth. The stuff we just got in from Albania. The only cloth we got back here, Mr. Simpson, is that stuff we've had since World War uh, I. Never mind, Stanley. Just bring it out. <laughs> He's cute. I don't see very well without my glasses. It's kind of dark in here. Well, we're not in the electric light business, sir. We're in the clothing business. <laughs> well, Stanley, my boy, this is your big day. You mean you're going to let me make a suit? You've got to learn sometime. I think maybe this is a little loud. Loud? You planning on driving a hearse or something? Get with it, pal. This is a very gay pattern. We call it the rolling pin stripe. Oh, we got a hound's tooth in the back. We give away a toothless hound with every... <laughs> Stanley, knock off with the backroom jokes already, huh? Measure them. Measure them. Stanley, you're going to make them a suit, right? Right. Then you got to measure them, right? Right. All right, measure them. <laughs> with a tape measure. A tape measure? It's like a cloth ruler. <laughs> cloth ruler, Stanley. The whole way. The whole way. Left to right, two-thirds. Left to right, two-thirds. Up and down, five feet. Up and down, five feet. Shoulder, 22. 22, shoulder. 26. Shoulder, 26. Have you, um, have you heard anything yet? No. It's been almost a week now. I wish Mr. Coulter would change his mind. I just don't see myself as Woodward's assistant. If you only had a big idea, Philip, a real big idea, a novelty that was really novel, like Mr. Lonsdale's sensation last year, the kitty dish, remember? The kitty dish? You mean with the raised gold lettering that said, here, kitty, kitty, kitty? I have something much better than that. An Indian suit for kids with real feathers. And get this, hanging from the belt. Two artificial scalps. Not bad at all. I have the prospectus right there on my desk. I'm going to bring it up tomorrow at the policy meeting. Oh, I have to go now. I have a rather important appointment. Good luck tomorrow, Philip. Thanks. came back? Is my suit finished? It must be ready by now. Uh, Stanley, he came back. <laughs> Step this way. You can change right in here. <laughs> uh, kindly remove all your valuables, please. And uh, hand the suit out when you take it off. He came back. What do you know? Shh. You better knock out a couple of lights. Where is he? Shh. Shall I give him the suit? No, we've got to get his suit first. Uh, would you hand your suit out? We'll give it a little pressing. <laughs> Thank you. Gotta hide this. Tell him we sent it to the cleaner. Why? Because he's got to walk out with the suit. Once he wears it, we're legally in the clear. Put it behind the counter. I can't wait to see how this came out. <laughs> Oh, 
Where's the mirror? Look how the arms came out. And the legs are in the right place. A beautiful job, Stanley. My boy, your talent frightens me. If you have a mirror, I'd like to see what I have on. A mirror? A... And look how the coat comes around and it meets up at the right place. Stanley, show the gentleman the mirror. Oh, no! Oh, look at this thing! Look at the fit, look at the material. It, it looks as though it's made out of an old awning. What is he saying? It's all right, Stanley. It's magnificent. It's not magnificent. It's a shambles. But it comes out even any way you look. If you want my opinion, sir, it's a poem of beauty. Nobody asked your opinion. You can put this thing in a box and throw it in the river, and I want my own suit back. Uh, well, we sent it out to be cleaned. I never asked for it to be cleaned. It's free, part of the Simpson Suit Club service. But I can't go out there in the street in this thing. It, it's positively indecent. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Uh, Stanley, go lie down and rest a while. You crushed him. I can't help that. He's made me look like a gangster. Uh, look, chum, you got a suit for a dollar. It needs a little alteration here and there, so what? Wear it around a while, till it gets to hang here. You know, give it a little airing. Know what I mean? You'll get to like it once you get there, moving around inside of it. You know, when am I gonna get my own suit back? Uh, why don't you try us tomorrow? need some help. I beg your pardon? Oh, excuse me, bud. I thought you was from out the track. Dude? You're late. The bus has been waiting half an hour. It's all set. He's here. One half grand a night and the rest Saturday. He's waiting inside. Look, I've got to get away. Right back in here. Well, this is extremely kind of you. I really don't know how to thank you. It's rather awkward to explain. You see, my boss and his wife. Joe, he's here. Danny the dude from out of town. From the description, I'd have known him anywhere. They told me you ran a fancy duds, but I had no idea. Man, that's a hunk of hollering, ain't it? <laughs> yes, I, I suppose it is. Look, I'm afraid there's been some slight misunderstanding. Okay, okay, you don't have to play it so dumb. We was tipped off, you was expected. Now, we don't want any trouble. You guys furnished the protection, that's all we ask. Now, here's a half a grand. Count it. Go on, go on, count it. Take them off. Look, I can explain everything. Yes, down at headquarters. You can sing to the inspector. Sing? Well, who's the inspector? McDonald. McDonald? Yeah, you know him all right, don't you, dude? Vaguely, I... Come on. Look, I want to see my mouthpiece. Well, look at the suit on the dude. All right, start talking, big shot. I can explain everything. There's nothing to say. I said talk. Just talk? That's what I said. Very well. He's a cool one. Shall I begin at the beginning? I am the man you're looking for in the Dennis case. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Make note of this. Last year, a girl called Kitty Carstairs and myself rubbed out a man called Mike the Gat. Call the commissioner. We dropped his body down the dumbwaiter shaft. It was shortly after this that I altered my methods, and I substituted the Boy Scout axe for the butcher knife which I had used on my earlier jobs. I was pleased with the change, because although it cut down slightly on my artistry, it added greatly to my efficiency and speed. I had few complaints.
But, Mr. Sneed, what was the idea of sitting here and stringing us along all night? You could have explained it had been out in an hour. You were in no mood for explanations. All you wanted was a confession. Well, I must say you were convincing. It was quite a little joke. It may be your idea of a joke. I doubt if my attorney will find it funny. Good day, Inspector. <laughs> What are you gawking at? Maybe you don't like my suit. Oh, you've got me wrong, mister. I think it's great. I'd like you to take care of that as soon as possible, Miss White, and let me know the instant that Mr. Sneed gets in. Yes, Mr. Coulter. Look what just blew in from outer space. And with its pajamas on yet. <laughs> Who said the circus isn't in town? I do, because I'm looking at one of the monkeys. I had a suit like that once, on my honeymoon. Best suit I ever had. That's a snappy suit. I like a suit that looks like a suit. You're on your feet, Woodward, so you may as well begin. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first on the agenda, Indians. Now, uh, my idea would be a Coulter Deluxe Indian suit with war bonnet, bow and arrow, and a couple of artificial scalps to hang at the belt. Not bad, not bad. It smells. I beg your pardon. I said it smells. He's saying that just because he didn't think of it first. I did think of it first, and I still think it's a bad idea. And do you know why? Because when little boys are playing, cowboys and Indians, who always gets killed first? The Indians. Now, what child wants to buy something which can only result in him being knocked out of the game before it has hardly got started? Maybe you've got something better? I think I have, yes. The Coulter Junior Detective Set, complete with lie detector. It came to me last night. That's very good. Yes. It will be very simple to make. A small piece of garden hose, a tin box, a dial, and a pointer. And one of those things that doctors use <laughs> for testing your blood pressure. Wonderful. I have a slogan for the kids, too. Even your best friends can have no secrets from you. That's little short of genius, Sneed. We'll start production immediately. You'll be in charge of all phases. We'll discuss that after lunch. But, but Mr. Sneed, we're having a board meeting. It'll keep, B.W. It'll keep. Besides, I haven't really decided to stay on here yet. As a vice president? We'll discuss that after lunch. Come back to you later. You better get ready to run for the police. Here comes the suit. He looks like he wants to kill us. Uh, look, pal, anybody can make a mistake, huh? Here's your dollar. Give me back the suit. Let's forget the That's whole thing. That's not what I want. Oh? Uh, what do you got in mind? How much would you charge to make me an extra pair of pants? <laughs> Waist all the way. All the way. Up and down. <laughs> 